here you have a president who, you know, he becomes a national rock star precisely because of, of killing British <laughs> soldiers, right? Like, it, it is fascinating development here where, again, like the Jeffersonians were very French aligned. And then here you have, again, Andrew Jackson leading this pivot to the Anglosphere. Again, it just, just not that far disconnected from, obviously, wars of independence and the War of 1812. I mean, it's just a very fascinating dynamic here. <laughs> Yeah, oh, ab absolutely. I mean, because the, the Jacksonian movement not only includes Jackson, obviously includes many of his of, of his of his followers. Uh, but yeah, you still see it's it's an, it's a little bit of an interesting dynamic. Uh, really, after the War of eighteen twelve, though, there were flare ups. Uh, regarding you know border disputes with Canada uh, or even issues regarding the West Coast and then potentially Texas. Um, Americans, we came to see the British more and more as allies and not as enemies, right? Clearly the British uh, from an average American's perspective was the big bad guy uh, from the Revolutionary War to the War of 1812. But after that, there were fits, but this is the beginning of this uh, American, uh, Anglo-American alliance. And a big reason behind this, and this is why um, the, the, the um, protective tariffs, when we institute protective tariffs, we weaken that alliance is because of free trade. We realize it's mutually beneficial. We can engage in trading arrangements uh, and so on. But so, yeah, you, you, uh, from the, the support for a American British alliance, sort of informal alliances coalescing around a man who was famous for fighting the British, but that's just the way history goes sometimes. Mm -hmm.